Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to learn everything we need to know to play an Outlaw Rogue in the Legion expansion. This video is done from a level 110 perspective, so it covers things like artifact weapons and honor talents. Here's what you can expect to see throughout the course of this video. Abilities and passives, things that have been removed, reworked, or completely brand new. Then we'll talk about talents, the strengths and weaknesses of each tier. Then we move into honor talents and all the interesting choices Outlaw has. After that, we'll talk about the artifact weapon, the perks it provides, and the ones I feel are most important. Then we finish things off with openers and playstyles, turning you into a deadly outlaw rogue. But first, let's take a look at our abilities and see what has changed. Many skills have been reskinned or had their functionality merged with other abilities, while others have been removed from outlaw and are only available to other specs. Things like Bandit's Guile and Preparation have been removed entirely. Let's take a look at some of the skills that have been reworked. Sinister Strike and Revealing Strike have been merged into a single new ability called Saber Slash. Saber Slash has a 35% chance to strike an additional time, generating an additional combo point and giving you a free use of Pistol Shot. Pistol Shot is a 20 yard ranged ability which slows your target by 50% for 6 seconds. It costs 40 energy and awards 1 combo point. Slice and Dice has been replaced with Roll of Bones. A finishing move that grants you a variety of buffs. You can gain one, two, three, or all six of the buffs. Which buffs you get actually depends on how the dice roll in the animation. Here is a list of the buffs that you can get and their respective icons. Grand Melee grants 40% attack speed and 20% leech. Shark Infested Waters, 40% critical strike chance. True Bearing reduces your cooldowns by two seconds per combo point spent. Buried Treasure increases your energy regeneration rate by 40%. Broadside. Your combo point generating abilities will generate an additional combo point. And finally, Jolly Roger. Causes your Saber Slash to have a 40% chance to strike an additional time, bringing that strike chance up to 75%. Having one or two of these buffs sounds fun. Now imagine playing with all six. Evasion has been replaced with Repost. Instead of granting 100% dodge, Repost grants 100% chance to parry. Each time you parry an attack, you will counter attack, dealing a small amount of damage. Kidney Shot has been replaced with Between the Eyes. Between the Eyes has a 20 yard range and deals 4 times damage on critical strikes, synergizing well with shark infested waters. Eviscerate has been replaced with Run Through. Run Through has a slightly longer than average melee range and is pretty much the same otherwise. The passive Ruthlessness no longer lowers cooldowns and instead only grants a combo point when using a finishing move. Recuperate has been replaced by Crimson Vial. Crimson Vial heals you for 30% of your life over 6 seconds, costs 30 energy, and no combo points. Well that sums up the changes to abilities that we are familiar with. Now let's take a look at our talents and see what's changed there. In the first row we have Ghostly Strike, Swordmaster, and Quickdraw. Quick Draw makes free uses of Pistol Shot generate an additional combo point and deal 50% increased damage. Sword Master causes your Saber Slash to have an additional 10% chance to strike a second time, bringing it up to 45%. Ghostly Strike increases all damage you deal by 10% for 15 seconds, awards a combo point, and is just another button in your rotation. Personally, I feel Ghostly Strike is a fantastic option because it synergizes well with all of your other damaging abilities. The second tier is all about mobility, grappling hook, acrobatic strikes, and hit and run. Hit and run increases your passive movement speed by 15% at all times. Acrobatic strikes increases the range at which you can attack by 3 yards. Pretty interesting choice, making you have a farther range than all other melee. But my personal favorite is grappling hook. Grappling hook is a funky ability that can be used in all sorts of interesting ways. The third tier has Deeper Stratagem, Anticipation, and Vigor. Vigor increases your maximum energy by 50 and your energy regeneration by 10%. Anticipation gives you a maximum of 8 combo points, but you can still only spend 5 at a time. And Deeper Stratagem allows you to have 6 combo points, increases the damage of your finishing moves by 10%, and allows all your finishing moves to be used with 6 combo points increasing the duration of your between the eyes, the damage of your run through, and is generally a pretty solid choice. In this tree, I think Vigor or Deeper Stratagem are really solid options, but 
Outlaw has a lot of combo point overflow, so Anticipation can be a solid choice as well. It really depends on your playstyle and what you feel you'd have the most benefit from. The fourth tier is a defensive tier. Iron Stomach, Elusiveness, and Cheat Death. I feel Cheat Death generally isn't that solid of a choice, as it procs and you still pretty much can get killed. Elusiveness is an all-around good choice. I feel this is my favorite option for 3v3 Arena. And Iron Stomach increases the healing of Crimson Vile, healing potions, and health stones, making Iron Stomach fantastic for World PvP or Battlegrounds. Next we have Parlay, Prey on the Weak, and Dirty Tricks. Dirty Tricks makes your Gouge, Blind, Cheap Shot, and Sap free and cost no energy. This can be a pretty solid choice, but once you reach your Honor Talents and get Control as King, you're pretty much overflowing in energy and don't really have to worry too too much about having enough energy to gouge or blind on command. Prey on the Weak is a solid choice. The 10% damage increase works only with Cheap Shot and not between the eyes, but it also functions with Dismantle, so the target will take 10% increased duration through the 8 second disarm. And Parlay is basically a useless talent for PvP, it replaces your blind, has a 20 second cooldown and 30 yard range. Compared to blind's 15 yard range, uh, it lasts 5 seconds and shares diminishing return with sap. So basically, you lose your 8 second blind to get a 5 second parlay that can only be used on targets out of combat, and it shares DR with sap. So from a PvP perspective, I'd say Prey on the Weak or Dirty Tricks are your best choice. Moving forward, we have Cannonball Barrage, Alacrity, and Killing Spree. Killing Spree is my talent of choice in this tier, but Cannonball Barrage is also a fantastic choice in situations where you feel your Killing Spree can be stopped. If you get stunned, sapped, feared, Dragon's Breathed, any kind of CC that hits you while you're Killing Spree will stop the Spree and do no damage. Cannonball Barrage is just placed on the ground, has a shorter cooldown than Killing Spree, but doesn't do as much single target DPS. When you combine Killing Spree with Ghostly Strike, Prey on the Weak, Plunder Armor, and tricks of the trade, you can almost one-shot people straight up if they have no defensive cooldowns and you catch them in a stun. Alacrity is kind of useless and more of a PvE talent. Cannonball Barrage, definitely good for BGs, but for organized threes, setting up a good killing spree can win you the game. Finally, we have Slice and Dice, Mark for Death, and Death from Above. Death from Above is actually nerfed in PvP and only does 25% increased damage instead of 50% increased, so I feel DFA really isn't worth uh, investing your talent choice into. Mark for Death is a really solid choice for opening. I really like to mark for death and then roll the bones from stealth before I cheap shot so that I can have a chance to get a buff active and not have to worry about it midway through my opening rotation. Slice and Dice actually replaces roll the bones. So if you're not a fan of the RNG of roll the bones, Slice and Dice is a good choice for you. But even in a PvE situation where you have 100% uptime on your target, Slice and Dice is a DPS loss over using Roll of Bones. So personally, I feel Mark for Death is the talent of choice in this tier. Well, that sums up our talent choices. Now let's take a look at the Honor talents. Starting from the top and working our way across, we have Gladiator's Medallion, Adaption, and Relentless. Relentless reduces the duration of all incoming crowd control effects by 25%, and this stacks with the Orc Racial, making stuns really short if you take this and play an Orc Rogue. Adaption will automatically use your PvP Trinket if you get hit with something that's over 5 seconds, rendering you without a Trinket for a minute. But the Gladiator's Medallion is my talent choice. I prefer this one over the Automatic Use or the Reduced CC, as if you get put in a really dangerous situation, you're able to Trinket and get out of there. Hardiness will reduce all damage you take by 20% as long as you're above 80% HP. This is good against teams that you feel will swap to you in a stun and burst you, but the damage reduction is only effective when you're above 80%. This in conjunction with elusiveness makes rogues pretty difficult to kill. Reinforced armor is a passive that will increase your HP by 10%, increasing the effectiveness of Crimson Vile. Sparring will reduce melee damage by 50%, 20% chance to proc. This is definitely a solid choice against melee cleaves. Reinforced armor is a good all around choice. And hardiness definitely, I feel, is one of the more solid choices in this tier. But it can be difficult to depend on, especially in 2v2 or battlegrounds where you're not always getting topped up because you don't have a dedicated healer. Maneuverability will give you a freedom effect for 4 seconds after using sprint. 
Boarding party will make it whenever you cast between the eyes. All friendly players within 10 yards gain 30% movement speed for 5 seconds. And cut to the chase will make you match an enemy's movement speed and exceed it by 5% anytime anybody around you moves quicker than you do. So if you have, let's say, a crippling poison on you and a rogue is moving at full speed around you, you will move 5% faster than him. As well, if a druid is in travel form, kiting you, and you're within range, you will match his movement speed and exceed it by 5%. I feel Cut to the Chase is definitely a solid option. Maneuverability though has its uses. I feel it's a really solid talent. And Boarding Party, I haven't really seen much use for it. Especially because if you're already slowed and you get that 30% movement speed, it's barely noticeable. Turn the Tables is really good for solo play, in battlegrounds or in duels. Whenever you come out of a stun, you will increase your damage by 15% for 6 seconds. Honor Amongst Thieves will grant you a combo point whenever an ally within 15 yards critical strikes, but it cannot occur more than once every 2 seconds. Tricks of the Trade Do you guys remember Tricks of the Trade back in the day, increasing your teammates damage by a set percent? Well now, Thick as Thieves will increase your damage and your teammates damage by 15% for 6 seconds. I think in any situation where you're able to put Tricks of the Trade on a teammate, be it in a battleground or in an arena, this is definitely the talent of choice. But if you're dueling, Turn the Tables is my personal choice. Take Your Cut will grant your teammates within 8 yards 15% haste for 8 seconds whenever you cast Roll the Bones. 8 yards is a pretty small radius, so it's extremely difficult to give your teammates that buff. Control is King. Any time an enemy within 40 yards is stunned, silenced, or polymorph, you gain 5 seconds of adrenaline rush. This works off of your openers, which is why I said dirty tricks isn't all that important, because rogues are honestly rolling in energy when they have control of his king. It's a fantastic talent. And drink up me hearties. This will give you the ability to create a health stone basically for your teammates. Um, I haven't really spent much time using it, because Control is King is just so darn powerful. Cheap Tricks. After a target comes out of blind, they have a 75% chance to miss for 5 seconds. But the real positive part of this talent is Between the Eyes reduces the energy cost of Pistol Shot by 100% for 5 seconds. Dismantle. Rogues will be the only class that I know of with a Disarm effect. 8 second disarm on a 45 second cooldown. This is a fantastic talent choice anytime you need to relieve pressure from your teammates or control a melee in a 1v1 situation. And Plunder Armor. Plunder Armor steals and equips the target's armor, reducing the damage they deal by 20% and maximum health by 20%. Also increasing yours by the same amount throughout the duration of the effect. When you combine Plunder Armor with Tricks of the Trade, Prey on the Weak and Ghostly Strike, your killing spree has a 55% increased damage and is honestly some of the highest burst in the game. I feel Plunder Armor is definitely the choice in this tier, but if you're in a situation where you need to save your teammates, let's say versus a Demon Hunter and a Windwalker Monk, Dismantle helps so much. Dismantle also triggers Prey on the Weak, so targets take 10% increased damage throughout the duration of the Disarm effect. Well that sums up the PvP talents. Let's spend some time talking about the artifact weapon. Starting with Curse of the Dreadblades. Invoke the Curse of the Dreadblades, causing your Saber Slash and Pistol Shot to fill your combo points. However, whenever you use a finishing move, it will consume 6% of your HP. If you're in a 1v1 situation, you can actually Cloak of Shadows and resist the damage. But if you're in an arena situation, you're going to want to save your Cloak for when you're getting bursted. Now, instead of speaking about each and every perk individually, what I'm going to do is talk about the ones that I feel are the most effective. Obviously, you have to start from here and move your way through the tree. So, Cursed Edges, you know, 15% increased damage on Saber Slash, solid choice. But, you're going to want to make your way down to here, Ghostly Shell. The Dreadblades will heal you for 6% of your maximum HP for each effect cleared by Cloak of Shadows. And for each spell resisted during its duration. From there you have access to Greed. 
Greed will cause Run Through to occasionally deal an additional 100,000 damage and heal you for 75,000 health per target hit. This works against things like pets, uh, unholy DKs, demonology warlocks, and beast mastery hunters have a lot of pets. So if you get good RNG, you heal yourself for a humongous amount with greed. <clears throat> Some other perks that I feel are very, very solid choices are this one here, Fate's Thirst, will increase the damage of run through. Gunslinger will increase the critical strike chance of your pistol shot. Remember, pistol shot does four times increased damage on critical strikes, making Gunslinger something you're going to want to max out as quickly as possible. Here we have Blunderbuss. A 33% chance on your Saber Slash proc, you know when you get a free pistol shot, to transform your pistol shot into Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss does substantially more damage than pistol shot, and getting a hold of this quickly is a solid choice. The other gold perk that we have is, during Adrenaline Rush, all your abilities recover their cooldown 15% faster. This is a solid choice as well. Blade Master. While Repost is active, you gain one combo point each time you parry an attack. This here is also a very solid choice. And another one that synergizes well with Gunslinger is Black Powder. It will increase the damage of Between the Eyes. So realistically you're going to want to get Black Powder, Blurred Time, Blunderbuss, Gunslinger, Fate's Thirst, Ghostly Shell, Greed, and the rest of them are kind of up to you. Fortune Strikes is good, combat potency generating additional energy. Fortune Strike increases the damage of your mastery by 30%, but realistically, the ones that increase the damage and crit chance of Pistol Shot, Run Through, and the Ghostly Shell are my personal favorite options within the Dreadblade's talent tree. Now let's spend some time talking about how Outlaw is actually played and how we can utilize our abilities and cooldowns to maximize our performance in PvP. One of the first things I'm going to talk about is Roll the Bones. Because Roll the Bones has a variety of different buffs, some of the buffs are better than others. When I'm doing my opening rotation, I generally use Mark for Death to get a free Roll the Bones up. Regardless of what kind of bones I roll, I'm basically just going to start going into my rotation from there. In this fake opener here, you guys seen that I got a triple buff, which is pretty sure one of the best openers you can get outside of having six buffs. Now, some of these buffs that I got here are really good. The energy regen, the extra combo points, and of course the critical strike chance. Critical strike chance is definitely one of my favorite buffs. It can produce some pretty insane numbers when you combine it with plunder armor, tricks, ghostly strike, and killing spree. But let's talk a little bit about some of the other buffs that I feel aren't so great. If I roll the bones and I get, let's say, a single roll on Grand Melee, I will continue my rotation, but I will try to quickly get rid of Grand Melee in exchange for something a little more efficient. The cooldown reduction buff is one of my favorites, and here's why. I'm actually able to completely reduce all of my CDs. I'm going to use Cloak of Shadows and Adrenaline Rush and everything. Watch the cooldown on my abilities. I basically reset the cooldown on Cloak of Shadows and the cooldown on Evasion in the time that I was just using my basic rotation. Now gr granted, I used Curse of the Dreadblades in there to help myself get more combo points to make better use of True Bearing, but realistically, I feel the cooldown reduction is one of the perks that allows you to play way aggressive because you can compensate by reducing the cooldown on your defensives. So when it comes to Roll the Bones, I feel Grand Melee and Jolly Roger are the ones that aren't all that hot but any combination of Broadside, Buried Treasure, True Bearing, or Shark Infested Waters is definitely a solid roll. Due to the RNG of Roll the Bones and Saber Slash, it's difficult to say exactly what a rogue's opening rotation is when playing Outlaw. Basically, this is how I try to open in most of my games. I will mark for death from Stealth and Roll the Bones. Regardless of what I get, I will open with Cheap Shot, Ghostly Strike, Saber Slash, Into Between the Eyes. If you're missing a combo point when you use Between the Eyes, don't worry about it too, too much. Ideally, what you're trying to do is get Roll the Bones up, make sure you put up Ghostly Strike quickly, and then start with your basic rotation of Saber Slash and run through at 5 combo points. 
Outlaw does some pretty incredible damage outside of cooldowns like Plunder Armor and Killing Spree, but this is how I would set up a perfect I burst situation okay, when I'm using DD. those cooldowns. Can I go Warlock? Yep, sure. Ready? Yeah. So let's take a look at that clip again in slow motion. What I do is I vanish and tricks of the trade hotted. Then I cheap shot, ghostly strike, plunder armor, killing spree. This combination of prey on the weak, tricks of the trade, ghostly strike, and plunder armor increases the damage of your spree by 55%, making it seriously some of the highest burst in the game I feel. But the killing spree one shot isn't the only thing that Outlaw has going for it. You can use skills like Adrenaline Rush and Curse of the Dreadblades to generate insane pressure as well. Run Through and Between the Eyes both deal insane damage, so being able to spam full finishers on your target after using only one pistol shot or saber slash is definitely nothing to scoff at. Realistically, Outlaw has some insane damage at any point in time. It has really good consistent damage, it has access to Tricks of the Trade, which increases your team's burst whenever you're trying to score a kill. All in all, I feel Outlaw is a very enjoyable spec to play, with high damage, high utility, and realistically, it's one of the better specs out of the three. I think Assassination is a little bit lackluster in comparison to Outlaw, mostly because Outlaw has really good damage and utility, where Assassination only has really good damage. Subtlety has very high mobility and pretty good CC, but Outlaw, I feel, has the most out of all three specs, with access to Gouge, Blind, Talented Dismantle, and some of the highest burst with Plunder Armor, Tricks of the Trade, Ghostly Strike, and Prey on the Weak Killing Spree. Well guys, that about sums up this video. If you have any questions, or you feel there's something that I didn't cover, please come over to Twitch TV and check out my channel. I'm always answering questions for viewers and trying to help lead people in the right direction when it comes to Rogue PvP. Editing and creating these guides takes a lot of time. In the past, I had company sponsorships and I was able to offset some of the costs of my time being invested in working on my YouTube channel. But currently, the channel is completely driven by the community, so do consider donating if you found these videos helpful. Until next time, my name is Sativ, and yahar mateys, we be playing pirates now.